sometimes people wonder, they're like, well, why did Jesus have to die for us to be forgiven? Right? I mean, I don't, if, you know, I'm going to forgive you. I don't make you, like, kill your cat, you know, to, to do that. I mean, that might be good, but, you know, I don't make you do that. But why would God need Jesus to die in order to be able to forgive us? Why can't God just wipe the slate clean and be like, all right, you know, blow the whistle, everybody back in the pool, everybody, you know, all ski going the same direction. Why can't he do that? You think of it like this. Um, you know, say that you borrowed my car and uh, you took it out and you wrecked it, totaled it. You come back to me and you're super sorry about it. What are my options here? I can make you pay for it. Um, if you refuse to pay for it, maybe, I don't know, maybe I could take you to court. If I forgave you, what have I just agreed to do? I haven't just made the car wreck go away. I haven't just automatically erased the damage. If I forgive you for wrecking my car, then what I have done is I've basically said that I will absorb the cost that you incurred. I'll absorb it into myself and I'll pay for the damage to the car. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is absorbing the effects of sin. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, this was God himself saying, you sinned, I'll take the effect. I'm going to give you mercy. I'm not going to repay you for your sin. I am going to absorb the cost of your sin and I'm going to give you life in its place, which is why around here we say that you can summarize the gospel in four words, Jesus in my place. He lived the life that I was supposed to live. He lived a perfect life and then he died the death that I'd been condemned to die in my place. That's why we say Jesus did not merely die for us, Jesus died instead of us. Paul continues, verse six, and then God raised him up, us up with him and seated us. You see past tense? You see it? He seated us already. He seated us with him in the heavenly places. Again, not will seat us one day, but has seated us, past tense, in the heavenly places. <laughs> Y'all listen to this. In God's eyes, I am already seated with Christ at the place of honor around God's throne. I could not be in a higher place in heaven closer to God. You ever go to an athletic event, you see people in like the really awesome seats, and you're like, who do you got to know to get in there? I am already in the greatest place in the world. I'm seated in the very best place. I could not be in a higher place. Not if I gave a billion dollars to the church. Not if I prayed for four hours every day. Not if I visited every country on a mission trip. Not if I went an entire decade and never sinned because he literally put me in Jesus' seat. Do you know what kind of confidence that gives you in life? I'm as sure of heaven. Listen, I'm as sure of heaven as Jesus is. And when I say that, people sometimes are like, what? They're like, how arrogant is that? Who do you think you are? You think you're that righteous? No, that's the whole point. Jesus was that righteous. And he paid my sin debt in its entirety. We traded places and now I'm going to heaven on his account, not mine. And by the way, already, already I experienced the benefits of that privilege. When I go to God in prayer, I know that God hears me as if I were Jesus. That's why we end our prayers by saying, in Jesus' name. We, we don't put that at the end as like a signal to God that we're almost done. That's not why we say in Jesus' name at the end of the prayer. What we're saying when we say that is I know that I'm God, I'm praying from his seat. I'm, ba I'm praying based on his record, not my own. Right, because sometimes what happens is when I come to God in prayer, I tend to start thinking that he's gonna hear me based on how well I've lived. Isn't that how you are? So I just think when, sometimes when I come into church and we start praying, if I, so sometimes I've had an awesome week. Not every week, sometimes it's been awesome. I'm, I read my Bible every day. I shared Christ with three people. Um, I you know, was super nice to my wife, even when she was a jerk to me. Um, I was really patient with my kids. I just did awesome. And I can just feel the pleasure of God all over me. And I'm like, oh, just, I know that God in heaven is like, man, I love being with that guy. And I feel like I can just ask him anything and he'll be like, sure, sure, man, look at your week, here you go, right? And then what happens is I go out from that and I usually have a bad week. And a bad week is, you know, I didn't hardly read my Bible and um, I didn't lead anybody to Christ. In fact, I cussed a few people out and probably drove them further from Jesus when they had a little summit sticker in the back of my, 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 my car. And then uh, my wife was nice to me and I was a jerk to her. And then I kicked the dog and it's not even my dog, it's a neighbor's dog. So it was just bad. It was just bad. And I come in and, and what do you do? You sort of in the worship time, you're kind of like, you're just sort of like, uh. and so you start making promises to God. Oh God, I'm going to do better next week. Oh God. And it's like, I'm like, God, I need some stuff from you, but I'm going to try to buy them on credit. I'm going to tell you what an awesome week I'm going to have next week, and then I want you to answer my prayers based on that. You see, both of those are, are basically saying you don't understand where God has already seated you in the heavenly places because when you come to pray, you're not praying based on your record, good or bad. You're sitting in his seat based on his record, which means when I come to God in prayer, it's, 
basically, basically when you say in Jesus' name, let me just translate that for you. When you get to the end of your prayer, you say in Jesus' name. What you're saying is, and the reason I expect you to hear this prayer from me is because I fasted for 40 days this, this week in the wilderness and resisted Satan to his face. And then I had so much faith that I walked on water. Mm-hmm. And then when they crucified me, I just looked at them from the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's why I think you should hear me in Jesus' name, amen. Because I am literally praying from his place with his position. I couldn't get higher. 